Hi guys, how are you going? It's Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel and as always, Autodidactic means to be self-educated guys and you want to be self-educated because believe me, you do not want to know what these guys are trying to teach us. So this video is going to be uh, Giants, Did Giants Run the Earth Part 2? And this one's going to be focusing on uh, the UK which used to be called, <clears throat> excuse me, which used to be called Albion or at least uh, England did. So yep, let's get into it. Okay guys, so here we go. So this is just the uh, Wikipedia page for Albion and as you can see Albion is the oldest known name for the island of Great Britain. Um, today it's still sometimes used poetically, blah blah blah. And if we come down here you'll see the giants of Albion. A legend exists in various forms that giants were either the original inhabitants or the founders of the land named Albion. Um, then it gets into um, how Brutus, who was a Trojan, um, first came there and defeated uh, the giants and a bit more down there it also says up here that Albion um, may be after the white cliffs of Dover so it might mean white um, there's a there up here somewhere but as you can see the white cliffs of Dover may have given rise to the name Albion and just as a side note um, it was after someone also another uh, <laughs> another angled us to uh, how they got the name. <laughs> Sorry, my brain's not working. Um, was after a giant called Albina who was Greek. Um, but yeah, it just struck me white cliffs of Dover, white Albina, Albino, Anglo, Albino, white. I don't know. <laughs> Things rolling around in my head. All right, so. Here we go. This is Gog Magog and the Giants of Albion. And yes, that's Gog Magog. So obviously there's uh, links to the Bible where we have um, Gog and Magog, um, who was a giant in the land of Magog. But uh, as you see here, after Brutus and the Trojans arrived, they explored the island and found it very much to their liking. Individually, the giants were much bigger and for the most part stronger than, than the Trojans. Only corn... Uh, only Corinius, one of the Trojan captains, could match them. However, there were only 24 of them and they could not match the Tro Trojan weaponry, armour and numbers. So only 24 giants. Um, and the Trojans battled the giants seeking to claim Albion as their own. So um, I'm not sure of the actual um, ties between the Trojans and the Phoenicians. Uh, I've, I've had a bit of a look into it. I need to sort of look a bit more, but Brutus of Troy, he, you know, after Troy was defeated, um, he, he sort of went out and then he uh, ended up killing his dad by accident, a hunting accident, got kicked out, and then um, yeah, the goddess, um, I think it was Diana, came, yeah, the goddess Diana appeared to him in a dream and told him about the island. So one day Brutus decided to hold a festival of Thanksgiving to the gods, during the festival, with many games and events underway, Gog Magog and the Giants launched an attack hoping to take the Trojans by surprise. Although the Giants at first had the upper hand, killing many, Brutus rallied his men and the Battle of the Giants, except uh, in the battle, in the battle, all of the Giants except their leader Gog Magog were killed. He was spared by Brutus specifically to fight uh, Corinius, who defeated him. With Albion now free of Giants, Brutus shared out of the land. Uh, shared out the land among his captains and followers as he saw fit and obviously Brutus that word the name That's where we get you know words like brute strength and brutal and this kind of stuff um, Although Gog Magog was killed he was uh, To return centuries later during the Norman conquest of Britain by King William the Conqueror um, This is just so it's talking about the legends and how it sort of uh, the legends of Brutus and the Giants, uh, Brutus of Troy. Um, so according to British legend, Gog Magog was the last survivor of a mythical race of giants that ruled the island of Albion before the arrival of Brutus of Troy. 
Um, so it was written down 1100. Um, Troy fell, uh, I've got that up here, I think it was um, BC, well, different days, but around 1200 BC. So that was um, when he got there, when it was quite early. Then later on, uh, we have Caesar. Now this is uh, giants in the UK. This is just a bit about um, an Irish giant, um, blah, 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 and how they, they were fighting over the body so they could uh, cut it up and study it, basically. Caesar's triumph over the giants. Marius triumphs at Aqua Sextiae and on the plain of Versailles, uh, is that how I say that? Proved a turning point in Rome's centuries old struggle against the Celtic giants. So, again, and these are called Celtic giants. Um, you know, obviously the, the Celts came from uh, the UK, probably Albion, so the same race I think we're talking about here. Um, before this, they had seemed virtually unbeatable. And the widely held conception of them as superhuman, plus the fear that their skulls might end up on some Celtic warriors' trophy shelf, caused many a Roman soldier to break out in goosebumps. But after Marius vanquished their biggest and their best, the mantle of invincibility fell from the Celts and to the Romans. Some Gauls were uh, times of change, blah blah blah. And then it just sort of talks about. I'll leave a link to, to all these um, pages if you want to read it. it. Just talks about how then. Basically, the Romans um, just, yeah, went to Gaul. They um, defeated the giants and then just uh, basically proceeded to take over the area and subjugate all the people. Um, the plea from Rome's military help only hastened their downfall. They opened the door to Caesar's subjugation of Gaul and his massacres of the great numbers of people. So, you know, th this is what was going on. These were guys were going around killing people. They were killing out the race of giants. Um, so this is back in Caesar's time, this is, yeah, uh, 71 BC, so just before the, the year zero. Um, as we come down here, uh, it also says, blah, 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 here it is here, sorry. Um, so in 55 BC, Caesar took time out from his Gaelic War. <laughs> it is a Great Britain, isn't that nice? Uh, the first voyage matched to no more than a reconnaissance to see if, uh, to see in the proconsul's own words, what sort of people live there and to get some idea of the terrain and the harbours and the landing places for his later invasion. So these guys in boats going around the world just invading and killing everyone. Uh, sound familiar? After putting ashore, Caesar and his party came upon men who, according to Strabo, were taller than the the Kelty or the Celts, and not so yellow haired, although their bodies are of a looser build. The towering Belgae, who originally hailed from that part of Gaul located just south of the modern Belgium, now controlled much of the Great Island. Okay, so they've turned up again. At, it sounds like Albion, it might be a different island. I want to think it's Albion, England. Uh, and there's giants there again. Now, this is a thousand years after um, Brutus. So no one seems to know where they first crossed the English Channel, but as Caesar later learned, they came ashore as raiders while roaming the island. However, the giants saw it as a pleasant place to live, and after plundering there, the natives, they decided to settle there. Able on account of their size and strength to do much as they pleased, they chose for themselves the coastal areas and became farmers. Uh, the Aborigines, or the native inhabitants, upon being disposed of the choicest lands, retreated to the interior, by the time the Romans had landed on England's shores, note Caesar, the population of these robbers turned farmers had grown extremely large. But his quick exploratory trip, uh, the proconsul caught them unprepared, easily put down what resistance they put up. They returned to Gaul to deal with yet another Celtic uprising there. So the Celtics are saying in this were the giants. I mean, it's just said it about three or four times. Um, and then it just goes, you know, this is all about, now this is probably not Julius Caesar, they were all called Caesars back then. Um, they run around <laughs> seizing things, right? Uh, blah, blah, blah. So this is all about the battles they fought them on the beach. But yeah, so 
I'll, I'll leave the link so you can read through this, but definitely more giants, you know, Celtics, they're calling them, uh, in Albion. So we've had them there in the 1200 BC, and now that was uh, like 67 BC, I think it was. Now here's another one. This is um, Irish, the, the Tuatha de Danann. This was a race of Celtic giants. <laughs> And the father gods who were believed to be the ancestors of the Irish Celts, they were said to dwell in the underground kingdoms or inside hollow mountains. One of the chief deities was Lugus, a name that translates to the Shining One. Okay, ring any bells? The Shining Ones? Revealing a parallel connection to Sumer's deified giant kings known as the Ari or the Anunnaki or the Anunnaki, who were also called the Shining Ones. Okay, now we've all seen the artwork, the uh, reliefs and petroglyphs from the Sumerians, um, and they definitely have giants in them. Um, Kukul, Kukul Lane, he is known as the Irish Hercules, and he's said to have come to Ireland in a special ship when his homeland was destroyed by a great flood. It is interesting that his name sounds very familiar, uh, very sorry, similar to the South American white god of Kukul Khan. That's Kukul Lane, a character described as a bearded white man and of very tall stature with deep set blue eyes. He was also said to have arrived on a boat telling a tale about his escape from his sunken island homeland. Okay, now, um, you know, also, um, Atlantis, um, obviously there's Legends of Atlantis sinking, um, that goes back to about 11,900 years ago, if I've got that correct, um, and basically, um, Atlantis has been found, we know where it is, it's in the Atlantic Ocean, basically, um, uh, it is where, um, it was told to us it would be, and I'm just trying to remember the islands, I think they're called the, the Azores, the Azor Islands, I'm pretty sure that's right, uh, so I'm, I'll have to do a bit of a video on that as well, but um, yeah, with Google Earth and stuff, when you can sort of look at the topography under the ocean, um, yeah, so that's where Atlantis is, so this guy um, may have come, you know, from his sunken island homeland, it's not that far from uh, Albion or the UK. Uh, the Simbri, these were giants living in Celtic Gaul, now that's uh, France. They had long manes of blonde and red hair and a fierce warlike demeanor. Red hair, okay. All of which led them to be compared to lions. Now, I find that interesting, seeing as now in the UK there's lions everywhere on symbols, you know, that, that's the symbol of, of Great Britain, isn't it? The lion. And not that there's ever been that we know lions in Great Britain, so interesting. They were also known as the Cimmerians, very similar to Sumerian, right? Which may be suggestive of a Sumerian connection. The legend led in modern times to the inspiration for the story of Conan the Sumerian, the fierce warrior of the northern land of Hyperborea. Okay, if you don't know what Hyperborea is, uh, that's the land up on the North Pole, four big continents. Um, Albion was recorded to have been one of the Titan Albion, he was recorded to have been one of the Titan giants fathered by Poseidon. According to legend, he came to England after the flood and was for many years the island's principal deity. In ancient times, England was actually called Albion after their Titan god king. Many British place names retain the word Albion or Albany to this day. So as you can see, there's lots of different theories as to how uh, why it was called Albion. There was a king, and you know, there's white from the White Cliffs of Dover, which is probably wrong. Um, there was another um, Al Albain, I think her name was, uh, who was a giant from Greece. So I'd say that, yeah, the, it's got something to do with giants, not, not necessarily the White Cliffs of Dover. That was probably just made up. Um, king Arthur, there is some... Arthur, Arthur, <laughs> excuse me, there is some of Arthurian law uh, which claims that he piloted an ark during the deluge. This legend also relates to uh, that he stood just over nine feet tall 
Inspired by stories that Arthur was buried in Glastonbury, King Henry II dispatched a crew to excavate the area. They found a lead cross at a depth of nine feet inscribed with the words, Here lies the body of King Arthur. They dug further below the cross to a depth of 16 feet and found a stone sarcophagus containing the bones of a man nine feet tall. History records the bones at Glastonbury, which were supposed to have been those of Arthur. Um, and it keeps going. So there's quite a bit on this page. Like I said, I'll leave these links. Uh, the Tritons, this is a race of giant gods spawned by the interbreeding of Poseidon with a mortal woman named Cleito. Now again, guys, listen to that story. Interbreeding of Poseidon, a god with a mortal woman. Okay, Watchers, Book of Enoch. Uh, they were recorded to have been the royal family of Atlantis. Again, and some are said to have escaped the flood that destroyed Atlantis. Titans were Greek race of giants born to Uranus and Gaia. So, I mean, and we've got Atlas, you know, obviously Atlantis, Atlas, king of Atlantis. So there's, there's quite a lot down here. Cyclops, Iberius, uh, Titan and brother of Albion. You know, so um, look at this. It's a bit much to go into right now, but I will go into in more depth later. Um, but yeah, interesting article, uh, interesting uh, website, that one. Okay, and this is the Tuatha Dé Danann, the apples of immortality. Apples, right? Apple a day keeps a doctor away, but also the apple the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil. So there's many, many ties, guys, to all these ancient stories. Um, and, you know, with uh, Anatoly Fomenko's work, um, Alternative Chronology, he moves dates around like the, um, with his research, you know, he's saying that the Trojan War was was not 1200 BC or before that it was more like sort of, you know, 200, 100 BC. Um, so all these things, all these stories look like they've been mixed up and mashed together. Um, it could just be one story or you know, just a few that have been split out and tried to be made into more than they actually are. Um, so again, who were the Tuatha Dé Ain? The Tuatha Dé Danann <clears throat> uh, brought fascinating skills and wisdom to Ireland. When they arrived there, again, that sounds like the watchers who taught the skills. <clears throat> um, they gained those skills from four wise men who resided in the four cities. One in each, Sinaias was a wise man who ruled Murius, Marias, blah, 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 different cities there. Uh, this is in Ireland. Treasures that were beneficial to Ireland. Later we will discuss the four treasures in each detail. Mysterious origin. It remains ambiguous how the Tuatha de Danann arrived in Ireland. Some sources claim that those people arrived through flying in the air and landing air. While travelling in the air, they were in the form of mist or fog. Okay, so what were they moving? Were they hiding themselves, disguising themselves from all these people who were trying to kill them and wipe them out? Other sources claim they arrived on dark clouds, later escorted people to believe that they came from heaven rather than from the earth. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Surprisingly, people profess that the race were actually aliens. Um, the only rational opinion regarding how they reached were, of course, was they had to come from boats and it states that the smoke or fog was actually the evidence where their ships burned. But it, that doesn't make sense because it said that they, they reached Ireland. So while well, their ships have burned while they were travelling there, um, that's just more mainstream madness. <clears throat> yeah, so just a bit about them. They're all shrouded in mystery. Um, <clears throat> same story. They've come from, you know, escaping a flood in a deluge and they're, uh, looked on as gods, they've got all these sort of skills that they can teach, uh, and it looks like they do. Um, now, this is Jack the Giant Killer. Um, so, according, according to the folklorist Joseph Jacobs in the English fairy tale, Jack the Giant Killer, uh, Jack kills a giant called Cormoran who measures 18 feet tall and has a waist circumference of 9 feet. He was also said to have six digits on each hand and foot. And again, this is in what's now the UK or Albion. Uh, now, Jack the Giant Killer, this was back around the time of King Arthur, which um, basically was prehistory. So, I mean, and with the dates the way they are, I don't know, you know, 
it was a while ago. His home was a cave on St. Michael's Mount where he walked across the mainland. Oh, this is just how the giant basically built an island. And Jack the Giant Killer, um, he took up the challenge to go and kill him because this guy, this giant was um, harassing people. So Jack went up, dug a hole, he fell and hit him in the head with a pitchfork or a pickaxe. And then he went on to kill lots more giants. Um, Jack then collects Cormoran's treasure, as was agreed with the grateful counsellors. So that's where Jack and the Beanstalk comes from. You know, he killed him and collects the treasure, the golden eggs. Uh, the people with delight was Jack ridding of them of Cormoran and gave him a belt <clears throat> with the following inscription written upon it. He is the right valiant Cornishman who slew the giant Cormoran. Cormoran was the first giant Jack killed and was uh, to set him on his way to becoming the famous giant killer of folklore. Okay, and then just a bit about King Arthur again. Um, we read before they excavated his grave. So upon excavating, uh, the searchers unearthed a massive oak trunk buried 16 feet deep, just as Henry had described. Inside was a human skeleton, which confirmed that they had discovered something special. It was absolutely gigantic. It appeared to be much taller than an average man, and the space between the eye sockets was as wide as the palm of a man's hand. Apparently this famous king was truly larger than life, and that's uh, King Arthur, King Arthur's grave. So King Arthur looks like he was a giant too. Um, and King Arthur, um, blah, 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 let me come up here. The legend of King Arthur is enduring. Uh, the earliest accounts are simple. A heroic king rescues his country. Okay, the story evolved over the centuries and further elements as Camelot, Round Table, Merlin, etc. are put in there. Um, blah, blah, blah. But basically what the story is um, for King Arthur is that he um, yeah, saves his country. He puts out the invaders. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, got rid of the invaders who were invading his country or what would have been Albion. So if you look at the information we've just gone over, the, the only people invading it were, were you know, um, like the Trojans with Brutus and then the Romans. So that would make him a giant. It would make King Arthur a giant defending his people who were giants against the invaders who were the, you know, Romans and Trojans and Probably Phoenicians is what they were. So a bit of information there. I do have a couple of pics to have a look at. Uh, here we go. This is um, a picture. This is depicting Albion. As you can see, this is supposed to be Brutus and his men rocking up on their little boat um, and some the women they've brought. And here we have two giants. Now these ones are at least dressed well um, because you, as you'll see, most of these giant pictures they try and make them look like they're you know um savages basically barbarians um stupid but they obviously weren't because if you look at the architecture around the world uh, a lot of it was built for big people uh this is andre the giant well we all heard of andre the giant let's look at the size of him now um he was like almost nine feet he was eight eight something uh, so he was a big dude so he this is what most of the giants that's what they're talking about the sizes are sort of eight to ten feet sometimes they go up to 12 but you know in in these sort of recent stories this is what we're hearing about is the size so he would be you know a giant but he wouldn't be a big giant he'd just be an, an average giant of you know what the stories are talking about still a big dude uh, here's a couple of giants. Now, I just found this interesting because uh, this is from France. These two are giants, but this is actually their siblings. This is one family, seven children, two of them, you know, huge anatomically great giants, you know, nine footers, and five siblings that are just standard size. So um, it looks like, you know, that the, the the, the DNA, the genes are still in there to come out and, and they do as we see, you know, we see wrestlers and basketball players and things. Um, and we have the stories of, you know, giants interbreeding with, 
you know, what, what they're calling mortals or, you know, basically our sized people. And that's how the genes got into our gene pool, I'm guessing. Um, that's if, you know, that's if, we were, if we're different races, but I mean, or different, you know, species, whatever. Um, well, they, it could just be a gene that um, help, you know, sort of stops, does or lets us grow bigger because we have genes in our body at the moment that um, stop us growing at a certain point. And when people keep growing, uh, they don't have that blocker, they actually get big problems. Um, you know, they grow too big, they get too heavy for their legs and knees and hips and things. Um, but these guys look like they're anatomically correct. So they look like they've just got a gene that lets them get bigger. This is Brutus, uh, the Trojan, who slayed the giants. And just interesting helmet. Look at all the, you know, the, the flowery sort of things that you, it's the same as you see all over the buildings around the top of columns and stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I just found that interesting. Of course, this is still back when we were using V's instead of U's. Now, <laughs> the giants of Albion. You know, when I did a search, I think it's next which I showed, but yeah, this is what, what the giants of Albion has been reduced to, just Warhammer, you know, video games. And as you can see, as I was saying, they always depict them as stupid, as savage sort of barbarians. Um, the dogs of war for hire. Regiment of renown. <laughs> um, this is uh, this is a picture of a giant, and this is supposed to be Merlin, and these are the giants helping him build Stonehenge. That's from around the 1300s, they say. That stated that picture, so the 300s probably. Uh, yeah, so this is when I did a search for giants, and uh, as you can see, Albion giants. On any images, and this is what you get: a Warhammer, 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 Citadel Ancient. I mean, there's a few, you know, Old Testament and Total Warhammer. <laughs> so this is how they cover things up. Um, I showed this uh, in another video I did. Um, what was I searching for? I can't even remember now. Um, but yeah, you get this all the time. Now, when you're looking for sort of specifics of history, hit stuff that they that they're trying to cover up and they don't want you seeing. Um, they just bring out all this other stuff. So when you look for it, you just get swamped with crap. Uh, here's just another picture. This is, again, uh, the Trojans of Brutus coming ashore. And these are the giants on Albion uh, defending themselves. And as you can see here, at least they're well-dressed. They're dressed, you know, uh, sort of that medi medieval style we see everywhere with their all got their big hats on, of course, because they've got big scarves, right? History of Jack the Giant Killer. So there we go. That's the original sort of story. Again, from uh, Great Britain, Albion. Here's an old map. I just found this interesting because, um, you know, in all these stories, they never really tell us. They just say, oh, they went ashore and there was giants. They never mention, you know, that it was covered in castles. Look at them all. It's covered in castles. This is an old map of Albion. Uh, that would be Ireland, again, covered in, you know, covered in castles. And this is another thing for all these old books. We just sort of, we told us a long time ago, so we get this image in our head of it's, you know, no technology and backwards, no buildings, no mud huts kind of thing. But in reality, it probably looked much, or well, actually much better than it does today because of the architecture that they still have. But these places were completely built out um, by giants. Here's another old map. Just of um, Albion. Of course, this is all written in, I'm not sure, is that Latin? Greek, I'm not sure, probably not Greek, I don't think. But again, you know, look at this huge castle, and there's castles and big stone buildings everywhere. So, giants in Albion, which was the UK, or which is the UK, guys. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. But um, 
Yeah, there's a lot of historical evidence that that talks about there being giants uh, not only in the UK, uh, in in Albion, but also and and Ireland, but also in Gaul, in France, um, and they seem to be linked back to Samaria, where we obviously have other. Uh, giants. Um, King Arthur was buried in a, in a stone sarcophagus, they said. Um, the same as Egypt. Obviously, Egypt, a lot of evidence of giants there as well. Um, so, yeah, this is part two on Did Giants Walk the Earth? So, I hope you've enjoyed that. Please leave me a comment, uh, subscribe, and like and share if you like this content. Please share it around. Um, and as always, guys, Stay autodidactic because self-education is the way forward. Thank you for watching. Have an amazing day and I'll catch you on the next upload. Bye for now.